In this video, I'd like to show you how to do reflections on a graph. And there are different ways that you can do these reflections. And sometimes it might be convenient to use coordinate rules. For example, I could take the coordinates of all these points and apply a rule like this. So I would maybe leave the x coordinate the same for each point and change the y coordinate. I could do that rule on each of the points here create a list of new points and plot those new points on the graph and it should be a perfect reflection. Or if I'm going to reflect this letter R over the Y axis, I would use a different coordinate rule. I could maybe say, take the coordinates of all five of those points in the letter R, I could change the X value to the opposite of X, keep the Y coordinate the same for each of these points, do this to all five points, create a list of new coordinates for all five of those points, and then plot those up here somewhere, and I would get the mirror image. But that's kind of a pain sometimes, and it's kind of a long process to go through when you can just visualize what it's going to look like anyway by doing the reflection. So I would like to show you today how to do these reflections without bothering with those coordinate rules. Let's start with this letter L. Let's reflect it over the x-axis. The first thing you have to do is make sure you know which is the x-axis. And out of these two axes, this one is your x and this one is your y. So my line of reflection is going to be right here along this x-axis. So what do I do to reflect? I just look at one point at a time. Let's start with this one. I just count how far is it from the line of reflection. This point happens to be one, two spaces above the line of reflection, so I'm going to reflect it one, two spaces below it to the other side, and there is my new point. Let's do the same here. This point is one, two spaces above, so let's go one, two spaces below, and there is that point. And the final point, if I start here, how far is it from the line of reflection? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six spaces below, and here is my new letter L. Nicely reflected over the x-axis, and I didn't bother with the coordinates of any of the points. Uh, so nice and quick. How about reflecting over the y-axis? Well, again, here is the x-axis. Here is the y-axis. Make sure you're reflecting over the right line. Here's the y-axis, so I'm going to reflect over this line here. And we'll do the same exact process. Start with a point. See how far it is from the line of reflection? Count that distance on the other side. So this point is one, two, three to the right of the line. So let's count one, two, three to the left. This one is also one, two, three to the right. So let's go one, two, three to the left. And finally this point is the same, one, two, three to the right, one, two, three to the left. How about this point? One, two, three, four, five to the right. So one, two, three, four, five to the left. And one, two, three, four, five to the right. So it will reflect over one, two, three, four, five to the left and I can now just draw in my shape and here is my reflected letter R reflected over the Y axis. Sometimes the reflection lines are a little bit trickier than just reflecting over the X axis or the Y axis and I'd like to show you two of those quickly. Here I'm going to reflect a letter F and a letter P and here I, it says to reflect over the line x equals net, I'm sorry, x equals positive three. So what I need to do is I want to go on the x-axis, which as we know is this one, and I want to find where x equals three. So here's the origin, that's x equals zero, x equals one, x equals two, x equals three is right there. So the line x equals three is the line that passes through that point right here. So that will be my reflection line. If I take the coordinates of any point on this line, the x coordinate is always 3. The y coordinates may grow or shrink, 
but the x coordinate is always a 3. So when I reflect, let's do the same thing as last time. We'll take each point, count how far it is from the line of reflection, and count that same distance to the other side. This point is 1, 2 to the right, so let's go 1, 2 to the left. Here's 1, 2 to the right, so go 2 to the left. This is 1, 2 to the right, so 1, 2 to the left. This point is 1, 2, 3 away from it on the right side, so 1, 2, 3 away on the left side. And 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, so 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. Connect my points with lines. Looking good. There's my letter F reflected over this line, which is x equals 3. And finally, let's reflect this letter P over the line y equals negative 2. Remember, here is our x-axis. Here is our y-axis. Where is the line y equals negative 2? Let's start at the origin. Let's go on the y-axis to where y equals negative 2. That means I'm going to go 1, 2. 2 down below the origin. That's where y equals to negative 2. And the line y equals negative 2 is the line that passes through that point. So there is my line y equals negative 2. The x coordinates may change all along that line, but no matter where you are on that line, the y coordinate is always exactly negative 2. Now let's reflect one point at a time. This point is one above the uh, line of reflection, so let's go one below. This one is one, two, three above, so go one, two, three below. This one is one, two, three, four, five above, so go one, two, three, four, five below. And finally, this one is one, two, three, four above, so go one, two, three, four below. And there is our reflected over letter P. Reflected over the line y equals negative two. So you don't need to do fancy coordinate rules sometimes. They're helpful and they can be good, uh, but sometimes you can see it, you can plot it, you don't need to do all those, uh, use all those coordinate rules when you're just reflecting on a graph. It's sometimes not necessary.